Welcome to Sweethearts or Arrivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What's on our table today? Council of Four. Council of Four. Well, you'll notice this copy is published by Cranio Creations. Mm -hmm. But when you look it up on the Board Game Geek, you're going to see a different color because I think it's going to be published by Cool Mini or not. Simon. Right. Or come on. Something. C-M-O-N. Okay. <laughs> so, this game can play two to four players. Yep. They recommend it for people that are aged 10 and up. Mm -hmm. And it can take you anywhere between 40 and 70 minutes. There we go. Uh, what do you think of the components of Council of Four? They're okay. Yes. The artwork is not beautiful. Mm. It's kind of just... You get the artwork that you expect from that kind of cover. Yeah. Yeah. The map is really nice, but I mean, the color palette is all just kind of bland. It is. Which is kind of odd. Nothing pops out. Yeah. So, um, but the other components are great. I mean, you're getting these nice wooden meeples to put for your council members. Mm -hmm. And you have these nice big wooden houses. Yep. And the king is a token, which is nice. Yep. Like, those components are nice. And the cards are the little size cards. They're smooth. Mm-hmm. They're probably a medium weight card stock. Yeah. Which is okay for the amount of times they're going to be shuffled and used. Yes. Yeah. So I think the components part is good. Yep. The art is just kind of boring. Yeah. That's the only thing. And it's, it does seem odd that they couldn't, like, mess with the contrast of the board so that the cities could pop more. Because mm. it does just kind of blend into each other. Yeah. Kind of odd. Which is unfortunate because it makes the game seem a little bit more boring than it actually is. Yes. And what do you think about the strategy, which is a word we use for strategy, tactics, and luck? Um, it's an interesting blend. There's a lot of tactics uh, because you have to deal with shifting tiles, shifting council members, and shifting players. So there's a lot of tactics in that way. But there are quite a few long-term strategies that you have to work out as well. Because looking at the board and where the bonuses are for the cities, you got to plan your network out in advance. So that you're getting the most out of every single Emporium that you put out. Really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't really plan that much. No, you just go for the points, which just always happen to be right next to each other. Well, I go for the points when they are right next to each other. There you go. Yeah. Um, now with the luck, um, there's the luck of the cards, there's the luck of the council members a little bit at the beginning, and of course the luck of the different building tiles, but there's lots of ways that you can shift that and mitigate it quite mm -hmm. easily in the game, which is nice. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, all of these tiles here for the bonuses for the cities, uh, those are randomly put out at the beginning of each game. so. It's kind of random, but it's not really. It's just replayability, right. different setup. Right. And then, of course, the three different um, board panels that you have are double-sided. So you can use a different configuration, and you can just do a random one for each game. Which, again, doesn't really add to the randomness, just the replayability. So it's mostly tactics with some strategy. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of interesting choices with that, because... Do you go for the immediate easy two blue cities to get the first bonus so you can get the nice big 25 point bonus? But the two blue cities are nowhere near each other so they're not going to build to your network. Do you just focus on your chain of networks always making sure it's connected? Um, or do you go for all of the cities of one location? There's a lot of interesting little strategies, uh, different paths to victory with benefits and penalties for either one. Right, and I think because it's only random really in the setup. Yeah. Figuring out which of those paths to take is different each time. Yeah. So if you're good at really puzzling that out, mm -hmm. you'll have a lot of fun deciding which strategy to take each time you play the game. Exactly. Which is cool. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. What about the complexity? I don't think it's too, too complex. Mm -hmm. If it didn't have this really handy player aid, it would be really hard to remember all of the different actions you can take. True. But they have it organized really easy. Yeah. There's some quick actions, and then you get one main action. Yep. So you just have to figure out which cities you want to build in, so then you have to decide which councils you have to influence, mm -hmm. and then get the cards you need or have the money you need to pay for it. Yeah. So, and then, like you said, like deciding which bonuses you want to go for. 
I don't think it's very complex. It's probably like a mid-weight complexity game, I would say. Yep, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So would you say about how easy it would be to teach someone? Um, I wouldn't imagine it to be too difficult, uh, especially if they're used to the gameplay, like maybe if they played Ticket to Ride before. Oh, yeah. Because you're yeah. getting your cards, and then you use the colors of your cards to influence what you can do with the councils, mm -hmm. which is kind of neat. But then, of course, you got all these other levels on it. Like, in, if you're not getting the cards you want, you can start influencing the the, the makeup of the council, that's and that's a way of getting money. Um, I love the fact that there is the fourth council, which is the king's council. So you don't actually need to get a building permit to uh, manipulate your networks. It's a way of filling in gaps. It's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, but I don't imagine it to be too hard to teach. Right. It's funny that you make the comparison with Ticket to Ride because I kind of didn't see that before. But yeah, you are using your cards yeah. to get your places to put out like your houses, which are your trains. Yeah. But it's got that one level above because you've got all that mitigation stuff that you can do that you don't have in Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Which normally I really dislike mitigation like a lot. <laughs> I even don't like the word mitigation. Mitigation is awesome. But <laughs> in this game, it's not that annoying. So I really like it. I like how you influence the council. Mm -hmm. which you can mitigate the cards that you need to use. Yep. It's really easy to uh, wipe these clean. You just have to use an assistant. Yeah. You can even mitigate the council and then have a main action by using an assistant. There you go. Or if you need money, you can do it as your main action and get money too. Like it's really, you've got a lot of interesting choices. Yes. Between these two sides of your player aid. Yep. I wouldn't call it a gateway game. It's definitely a no. midweight. It's like if someone really loved Ticket to Ride, but they started feeling like a kid game, you can recommend Council of Four. It's similar, but it's got some more depth to yeah. it. So it's like a gateway game into midweight games. Yeah. But it's not a gateway game. Right. <laughs> Perfect. You're making that complicated <laughs> in Sorry. the complexity section. There we go. Yeah, and we had something to say about the rule book. Yes. Uh, before we started playing, we had two major questions. And one of them we even messed up during our playthrough. Uh, the first one that we kind of messed up on was when you're taking a secondary action or what the rule book calls a quick action. When you're reading the section on quick actions, it's always mentioned as quick actions. Yes. With an S on it. They pluralize it in the beginning of that section of the rule book. Yeah. So, which makes you think you can take more than one quick action. But you can't. You can only take one quick action per turn. And somebody might read the rule book and interpret it as it's very obvious you can only take one, but it's not. Right. To make it obvious, it should simply say in the book, you can take one quick action per turn. That should be the first sentence. Yeah, and it does not say that anywhere. Not the last sentence of the section. Yeah. 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 So that's unfortunate. Uh, the other one is when you are building an emporium and connecting it to a network, you can say that as a network or you can say it as like a chain. Right. For the first several times we played, if I built a house, let's say I built here in B, and I already had D, E, C, and A, I would have like this really difficult choice. Do I chain it out to E and get these two bonuses? Do I go D and get those two bonuses? Or go to A and then C? Kind of like a chain reaction. Right, a chain reaction from where you start. Yeah. yeah. But it's not. It's just a network. So if I had A, D, E built, and then I built into B, which connects them all together, I would get all of the bonuses. Right. Because they all suddenly become networked into one major network. Because when you really analyze what it says in the rule book, that's what it's talking about, networks, right? Yes, networks. If it's touching a road that's connected to the city you just built in, yep. then you get all of those roads. Yeah. It's not a chain reaction of where you start. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little... That part is a little complicated. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not the game that's complicated. No. Just those two somewhat vague descriptions of how the actions yeah. work. Yeah. It could have been worded clearer. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we... Yeah. So hopefully all that helps. All we're saying. <laughs> and hopefully we got it interpreted correctly. Yeah. Someone will always will tell us there if we say something wrong. <laughs> Perfect. So what about the playability? Playability. Um, mechanics with the theme is very interesting because I do feel very much like I'm manipulating councils in a very cool way. I feel very bad about it because I feel like um, 
bumping someone off of the council because he's gone and I get four dollars. That's awesome. No. I love that. No, I, I feel like it needs to be more <laughs> like a vote or something. No. Not at all. And then you wonder why your assistants like kind of look like Darth, Darth Vader. Vader. Uh, it's because one of your quick actions can be to send this guy off to bump someone off. Oh, assassination! No, that's <laughs> wrong. That's wrong. That's awesome. It's, it's, in real life, it's wrong. Yes, but this is a board game. It's not real life. Okay. <laughs> so I like that. I think that's awesome. And then you're influencing them to get building permits so that you can build, which is great. And then you're networking this great big huge like network of cities and you're getting like kickbacks every time you do it. Mm -hmm. It's a very seedy underworld type game. But with a cute little, you know, medievalish <laughs> little theme on it. There you go. Yeah. Evilness. Like, no, it should not be evil. <laughs> it should be good. I like it. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. It works well. I like the game a lot. Yep. Um, for the number of players, we've only played a two player game and it works very well as a two player game with the simple addition of adding a couple of emporiums to the board at the beginning of the game. And that's done randomly by flipping over uh, one building permit per section. And it could be anywhere from having three to nine emporiums at the beginning of the game. So even that is going to be different each game. Mm -hmm. So that's very cool. Um, as for replayability, again, because of the randomness of the setup of the city bonuses, um, the configuration of the three boards uh, it's going to be very different each game even though you're playing the same game mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those where you learn the rules and the rules are the same every single time but every time you play it, you gotta learn how to manipulate those rules a little differently to play to how the game has set up this time right yeah which I like a lot mm -hmm. yeah that that really good for replayability me too so, does it have the awesomeness or the cuteness? Awesomeness. It has the awesomeness. It's cute how they have these little um, council things. I mean, that's an interesting way to showcase your council. The balconies, yeah. Yes. But, I mean, it's not overly cute at all. I mean, it's got pink people. Yeah. And then you just bump them off. Right. And they die. No, they're just, they're unelected. <laughs> But another thing I forgot to say way back in the components part is these little things are very tricky to get in this little part here where it holds it. Yeah. Because we thought about maybe gluing these together so they'd stop falling apart. Mm -hmm. But if you glue them together and you don't glue them together with enough uh, thing, because this hole here is too small for actually if you were to glue these straight. Yeah. It'd be great if these were like a plastic piece. They're a great component. It's just they're very fiddly. Yeah. If it was like a a one piece plastic piece. I don't like plastic in my board games though. So I I prefer the cardboard. I just, this could have been cut bigger. Maybe. And then I could glue this together. And it would always be together. And mm. then it would still fit in that spot. Yeah. Anyway, that's a rewind from way at the beginning. It should have been <laughs> way at the beginning of the video. There we go. Not in the cuteness and awesomeness section. Yeah. Definitely has the awesomeness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if they're going to update the artwork of the board in the new yeah. in the new version. Yeah, it's probably going to look really nice. Because yeah. the cover looks really fancy. Yes. Car cartoony. Cartoony, yeah. So I don't think... Uh, we're not going to update our copy. We'll keep the copy we have. Yep. Um, but it does look like it might be cuter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Are we going to trade it or keep it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to keep it. <laughs> we're going to keep it. Because I just spoiled that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy Council 4. It's like one of those perfect midweight games with lots of replayability, mm -hmm. uh, constantly adjusting your, your skill to what the board has given you this time, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy a lot. Yeah. And it doesn't take long to play or set up, which is really awesome. That's good, too. And lots of really interesting choices. Yes. Yeah. So, do we finish it as Sweethearts or Rivals? We finish it as... Rivals. Rivals. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just so fun setting up your network and then, like, deciding when you're going to have a double turn. Yeah. Or when you see them, like, setting up the council to buy something and you're like, well, I'm just going to use a quick action and my main action and I'm going to really mess up what they wanted for the council. Yep. 
just because I'm thinking about going there myself the next time. It is a bummer that you can't do something like that and bump off somebody else's Emporium or the King. What? Ha! <laughs> no, 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 no. Regicide. That's horrible. <laughs> I don't even know why you would say that. Because it would be funny. No, it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Council of Four. It is. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video. Later. Because it's funny. <laughs> I want to kill the king. No. <laughs> the king has never seen. <laughs>